So anyway, let's kind of get rolling here. Um, what do we need to know? What do we need to be looking at, right? So if you remember on Google Classroom, let me bring that up for you guys on the screen here, right? I've, I have added uh, this quiz review materials. So if it's not on, well, I don't know why this is taking so long over here. If it's not in here, then it's not going to be on the quiz, right? So the two PowerPoints that you need to look at, the two notes, anyway, these are, um, remember we use the class website for this more than anything, but uh, these are kind of review PowerPoints, right? So uh, let's kind of open these up quickly here. And I'll kind of point you to a couple things. Um, you should remember about the different reasons for the exploration, right? Um, for sure, we, you need to remember the whole God, gold, and glory, the triple G's, right? Uh, don't forget that. Uh, the advances in technology are going to allow the exploration to, to just flourish, right? Um, so that's a really important thing as well. We talked about all the different technologies, which we'll get to back in a second. Remember the trade routes have been closed off by the Turks. Remember when Constantinople was taken over uh, by the Turks and changed into Istanbul. Uh, and then every other country is going to have the differing motivations, right? So we talked about three major technologies that you're going to need to be aware of, right? You have the rudder uh, for one, you have the Latin sail for another, uh, and you're going to have the astrolabe, right? We talked about all three in a good amount of detail uh, for sure, right? The rudder works with the sail and using them with the caravel, which is the name of the ship. Uh, you can actually kind of sail against the wind for the first time, which allows them to be able to move, right? So we talked about Portugal being the kind of some of the first explorers, first major explorers. We talked about Prince Henry the Navigator kind of financing some of these, right? Um, financing a lot of, of these expeditions, right? Um, for to head we uh, along western coast of Africa and to see what's over there, right? Uh, you have Bartolome Diaz, right? Bartolome Diaz is the first one to kind of make it to the southern end of, of Africa uh, for Portugal. And you're going to have Vasco da Gama, who's going to be the first one to make it all the way to the Indies, right? So don't forget about those people. You might need to know them. Um, don't forget the Portuguese. Their big thing is going to be these trading posts that are going to be set up along the western coast of Africa. And it's going to be um, a lot of the slave trade is going to kind of come from these people, right? We talked about triangular trade. Uh, you have the slaves moving from Africa to the Americas. You're bringing uh, from the Americas. These people are then loading up with tobacco and sugar and other raw materials, bringing them to Europe, right, where they're going to be manufactured into goods. Sorry, this cat is... I'm going to point on the cat here for more fun. Um, but anyway, you're going to have these manufactured goods brought to Africa and traded for slaves and ultimately uh, that's going to be this triangle right and it's going to continue it's going to be super profitable for a lot of people right so we talked about Spain we're re-bringing up that whole idea of God gold and glory right the triple G and the Spanish are going to mostly be economic right they're going to be looking for precious metals they're going to be looking for gold uh, you're going to have mission work that's going to begin as well uh, and that mission work, mission work is super important, and it's going to play a huge part of the encomienda system um, as well a bit later, right? And also legacy. Guys like Cortez, guys like Pizarro and such are, are going to be wanting to leave a name for themselves, and people are ultimately going to be trying to make this happen for themselves too, right? We have people like Coronado we talked about, and Ponce de Leon is going to go to Florida looking for the fountain of youth, they say, right? So, anyway, exploration in stuff for Spain as well. Don't forget Columbus, his discovery of the New World, right? Um, he's This rediscovery is going to kind of open the door for further exploration you know, of the New World by the Spanish from the Europeans as well from the Old World, right? And it's going to create this Colombian exchange, right? The Colombian exchange is this chain, this ex 
exchange of ideas and exchange of goods and things that are going to be between these two now areas of the world that are going to be connected for the first time in a very long time, right? So we talked about a number of the things. There was a good graphic on our class website. Um, don't forget that, right? So you have uh, the animals and things. Just just read over these and such. I'm not going to ask you too many questions about this, uh, about specific things, but you should just be aware of them, right? So we talked about three sort of civilizations as well. Um, that sort of they were three civilizations uh, in South America and and as well as Central America, kind of in 1491, if you will. Uh, we have the Olmecs, kind of BC group, right? Uh, you're gonna have the Maya, who are this AC, um, you know, after the common or the common era group, right? Um, they're gonna be kind of the first major civilization, if you will, um, who are gonna be known for a lot of things, and we're learning a lot more about them with some of that uh, archaeology that we were talking about, right? The lidar and the, the shooting the sonar out in, in the trees and such, uh, and, and being able to find these new areas, right? But the Aztec, the Incas. Um, you should just know a little bit about them for sure. Uh, you can know this stuff would be wouldn't be a bad idea. So, uh, the Spanish colonies. You have Spanish culture spreading out from these conquests, right? Of Pizarro and of Cortez. You're gonna get the encomienda system, right? Uh, which is gonna be kind of based around. It's sort of like the caste system, right? It's where you are coming from is ultimately going to be your status, right? So if you are Spanish and you come from Spain, you're going to be the top of this pyramid. Uh, if you are born in New Spain of Spanish parents, you're going to be kind of below them. They'll probably interact, but then you get this mixing of blood, right? The mestizos, the Spanish and the Native Americans uh, having a, having children. Uh, and the mixing of blood, you're going to have straight up Native Americans and then straight up sl enslaved peoples as well. Uh, and the Native Americans are, are going to be sort of enslaved, right? Uh, they're going to be trying to be, their religion's going to be trying to be converted, right? Um, they're going to be working as well as the enslaved Africans uh, and such. Uh, and sadly, as we've talked about, a number of these Native Americans are going to be killed, right? Uh, over 90% of Native Americans are going to be wiped out by diseases between Columbus showing up, right? And the first kind of English settlements. So that's kind of a very disconcerting number for sure. Uh, we talked about the Spanish borderlands and this this culture that's gonna you know the Spanish are going to um, push into right all the way up into California, New Mexico, Texas. Uh, you're gonna start to get this these mestizo and culture spreading uh, and such, right? So let's move to France, right? France is going to largely be economic. It's going to be largely economic based off of the fur trade. Um, the two big people, really, the, only the biggest, well, I'm not going to ask you anything about Samuel de Champlain, but the big person you should know for France uh, is this man named Jacques Cartier, right? Uh, and Jacques is going to be exploring the St. Lawrence River, and he's going to be kind of setting up Quebec, right? There's the cat again. Um, so, he's going to be exploring Quebec. So, uh, he's going to be setting up colonies there, and you're going to have a very different colony and colonial experience um, versus the Spanish. So, the French colonies, they spread down from Canada. I'm trying to like point to my screen like you guys can see it. Um, but they're going to go down from Canada, down essentially the Ohio River Valley and into the Mississippi Valley, Mississippi River Valley, uh, and they will eventually spread down to New Orleans. And this is going to be relatively low population due to the rough climate, right? Uh, one thing they will do in comparison to the Spanish is this kind of relationship base. You know, they're going to have relationships with Native Americans because they need to work with them. They're friendly with them because it's tough to not be friendly with them uh, when you need to kind of rely on them to be able to effectively live in this cold climate, right? Uh, so that's important. I don't know what's going on with my connection. Hopefully you guys are going to uh, catch up here in a second. Um, don't worry too much about Holland here, right? Uh, the Netherlands really is what probably should say more than Holland. Um, but you're going to have economic reasons as well for, for the Dutch, right? You're going to have these overseas trading posts. Uh, the Dutch East India Trading Company being big advocates for this exploration. Henry Hudson is going to be this big Dutch explorer who's, who 
explores the New York area up the Hudson River where you can see that pink on the map uh, and they're going to set up New Amsterdam which will eventually become New York City right when the British kind of take it from them so England is the big ones that you're going to need to know obviously right and the big thing that they're going to be looking for is these economic cash crops right cash crops are super important for them to without the tobacco Jamestown would not have flourished uh, right and then you're also in addition to the Virginia colony, you're going to have the Massachusetts and Plymouth colonies, which are going to be religiously based, right? And these people are going to be escaping religious persecution uh, in England. Uh, remember, we have the Reformation going on kind of around this time. Uh, things get a little weird there, if you remember from World, World History Two. So people are going to try to get the heck out and be able to worship the way they want to worship, right? So the first British colony attempt, anyway, is this colony known as Roanoke, right? It's right there off of kind of the it, kind of on the coast here of North Carolina. Um, it doesn't go particularly well, right? Uh, the, it just doesn't go well. It's this lost colony. It kind of just disappears. Some of the main leaders had to go back to England uh, they, to get supplies, and when they come back, the colony has just kind of disappeared, and all the people are gone. So they're not really sure what happened to them. It could be Native Americans. They could have maybe moved inland and people are just are not sure, right? Uh, it's this big mystery still even to this day, and they're actually trying to figure that out through things like DNA evidence. So maybe we'll get a breakthrough eventually on that. But anyway, moving on to Jamestown, right? Jamestown happens uh, 1607. You should be familiar with that because, heck, a lot of license plates say that in this state. Um, it is the first permanent English colony, and that is really important. Uh, first permanent English colonies. I hope you guys can get that into your head because that is going to probably show up on your test. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Um, and it is going to be founded by this joint stock company where people are trying to make money, right? It's economic. That's that's important. I don't know what's going on with my connection and why it's, it's lagging tonight in comparison. Uh, but anyway, right? So Jamestown suffers some problems, right? You're going to have the workers were not there to work, right? They were there to kind of get rich, hopefully find gold and bring it back to England with them, right? So when they don't find gold uh, initially, that's sort of a problem for these people, right? Because they didn't lay the groundwork to be there for a while, right? So when winter shows up, things get ugly, people start starving and dying, uh, and that's bad, right? So you have John Smith, he's one of the early leaders, that's important, he introduces this, this whole idea of needing to work for food, uh, and then it kind of turns things around a little bit with his leadership. Uh, there will be all sorts of Native American issues uh, as well that happen, you're going to have kind of massacres of natives, and you're going to have massacres of, of English settlers um, between them, and it's kind of this this rough spot anyway. Uh, you're going to get a really bad winter uh, known as the starving time as well. I think it's the second winter there um, where people are eating. You actually have cannibalism that happens. Uh, it's a rough spot. So anyway, um, John Rolfe, right? He comes in after this 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 starving time and he brings tobacco. Uh, this tobacco is ultimately uh, this major cash crop that turns around the colony and it begins to expand, right? Uh, rapidly with the expansion, you're going to need government, Right, uh, and you're going to get what's called the House of Burgesses, and the big thing to get here, again, hint, hint, wink, wink, is that the House of Burgesses is the first elected assembly uh, in the new new world, I should say, not just world. Uh, I should probably fix that. So, anyway, moving on. Right, um, you should know what Cavaliers are. This this whole idea of ca Cavaliers, um, they are people that were English nobles in England and they're going to kind of receive these large grants, land grants from the king uh, and they're going to go for this free land essentially uh, to the new world and be kind of begin setting up these big, big areas, plantations and things, right? So you should be aware of that. That is actually the namesake of our mascot for the school. So, uh, sadly, you're going to get Africans that are going to be introduced into Virginia, and you're going to get slave trade to help with plantation work and things like that, right? So, um, we talked about indentured servants, people trying to get there uh, as well. We didn't really talk about the head right system too much, but don't worry too much about that. Um, so, we talked about, we talked about Plymouth here. Uh, the separatists, the pilgrims that are going to leave for religious persecution from the Anglican Church, which is just simply the Church of England. They want to worship how they wanted to. 
right? So they leave England and through a roundabout way, they're eventually going to end up in the New World. They actually were kind of heading for New York area, but they kind of screwed up and landed in Massachusetts. Uh, it was getting late in the season, so they felt they needed to kind of get a head start. Uh, so they start, they just kind of land there and, and start going. I think it was November or so when they landed. Uh, getting down to New York from there would have taken a while and it would have been late and they just the winter was coming, right? Uh, Ned Stark for you if you watch Game of Thrones. But anyway, um, they're going to sign this Mayflower Compact in 1620 uh, where they, it's going to be this kind of uh, direct democracy, and settlers are going to agree to rules and regulations of the colony kind of before they get off the boat. Uh, so, from there, after some of the successes of the Pilgrims, you're going to get the Massachusetts Bay Colony, right? Uh, the Puritans are going to follow the Pilgrims to the New World, essentially, to again avoid persecution from what's going on with all of the um, Reformation stuff in England. Uh, they're going to be led by this man named John Winthrop, and they're going to their community is going to be known as a Covenant community, as it's going to be based mostly around religious principles. Right? Uh, it's this shining city on a hill. Is this sermon that he gives? Uh, they're going to be fairly intolerant of other religious ideas, and they're going to have these town meetings where they, t you know, these the, the men of anyway are going to kind of come together and they're going to talk uh, about about what's going on, and they're going to have this direct democracy, right? So that's kind of it for the first PowerPoint here. I'm sorry, I have to kind of work on my cat here to get my mouse to be able to open up the second one. So that's the newest, that's the older stuff, right? Um, this is new stuff we went over just yesterday, so I don't know how much we really need to dive into this so much, so I'll probably skip around a little bit, right? One thing that you're going to definitively need to know, okay? One thing you're going to definitely need to know is the, the colonies, right? There is, a, there is a map. You will need to place all 13 colonies on the map. It'll really just be, they'll be there and there'll be letters associated with them. You need to tell me which ones are which, okay? So that is something that you're going to need to do. That's basically 13 free points. It's just a little bit of memorization. You know, hopefully you all are going to do that. Um, so the northern colonies, the New England colonies, if you will, are going to be Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and New Hampshire. Right? So they're up there on the top. Uh, you should be aware of them for sure. Right, we already just said this. There are these covenant communities. They're small, tight knit, religious. John Winthrop is the governor of Massachusetts Bay. He's their leader. They have direct democracy in these town hall meetings. Good. Moving on. So the one thing we didn't say a second ago is this whole idea of Roger Williams. Right, he is this man who was exiled from the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Uh, he there's disagreements with the leadership of the Puritans. Uh, and they essentially kick him out for his new and dangerous ideas, is what they, you know, is the way I'm phrasing it here anyway. Um, and he's going to go off and found the Ro Rhode Island, essentially. He founds this, this colony called Providence. Uh, additionally, you're going to have this woman named Anne Hutchinson, you should also be aware of, who is going to disrupt the colony um, through... It's, she's basically leading her own Bible studies in, in, her, in her house, but since she's a woman, this is a, a no-go here uh, for the, these Puritans. Um, which are fairly patriarchal, uh, and she's going to go off in with her exile and take some of her followers, and she's going to found Portsmouth. So these two colonies are going to combine eventually to form Rhode Island and Providence Plantations, which is actually the official full name of the state, believe it or not. So their economy in the north is going to be based off of economics, right? It's going to be based off of these things. You're going to have the farming isn't that great up north, the growing season isn't nearly as, lar as long, uh, so you're going to have kind of this small-scale farming that people are going to be growing more or less what they need themselves, right? Since a lot of the coast, anyway, it has access to uh, the sea, uh, their boats and stuff, they're going to be fishing, they're going to be whaling, right? They use whale oil and whale meat and things, um, whale oil for lights uh, back then. Um, the, some of these trees are really old trees, right? So they're going to be cutting them down, they're going to be logging, uh, in some cases for masts for these ships, uh, and shipbuilding, uh, and there we say that they're aided by this Puritan work ethic, this religious um, drive, essentially, that people have to work and work hard. Um, so, anyway, moving on to the middle colonies, right? We have New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. Uh, so know where these colonies are. Again, I know it's not necessarily labeled directly on this map, uh, but you can find and uh, just Google it, right? Find any map, and you should know. Um, so the middle colonies are going to be this 
it's it's different than the South and the North in quite different ways, right? There's a lot more mixing of peoples, uh, different religions mixing here, different type of people mixing here. Um, so you're going to have this religious tolerance. You're going to have the Huguenots, which are these French Calvinists uh, that are going to help settle in New York. You're also going to have Jewish people settling in New York. Um, you're going to have the Presbyterians in New Jersey, William Penn, uh, and the Quakers in Pennsylvania. These are just things that you should be aware of. Um, and they're going to be a based off of its, its trade, right? These people are going to be artisans and entrepreneurs. They're going to be have enterprise and business, and they're going to be trying to make money that way, right? Um, some of it's shipbuilding, some of it's farming, how, making ends meet, however they can, just like most of us. Uh, so that's what they do, right? Um, and around the middle colonies, you're going to have New York and Philadelphia kind of being these big commercial seaports uh, that are going to, you know, businesses are going to grow up around and people are going to be a flock to for cities, right? All right, home stretch, southern colonies, right? You have Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, okay? So we talked about the family status, the ownership of land, right? Be aware of that. Don't forget these, these wealthy aristocratic people that had been there for a while at this point. Well, they're going to start to dominate the colonial government and society, right? Uh, some of these people are also going to remain, have an allegiance to the Church of England uh, and England itself. They're going to have closer social ties so that when the American Revolution happens, there's going to be a lot more loyalists uh, to the British crown that remain down here, right? So a lot of the big plantations end up in these coastal lowlands, in some of these big rivers, these big tidal rivers, um, that have easy access out to the sea and thus the ports so that they can sell their, their, their tobacco, essentially, right? Uh, the big cash crops are tobacco, rice, and indigo. Um, you're also going to have what's called the backcountry. So the farther inland you get and the closer to the Appalachian Mountains you get, it, the tougher it is for some of these people to... You can't have plantations. Just the land isn't kind of conducive to that. Uh, but you're also going to have people kind of having their own farms, and they're going to head back to that kind of subsistence farming where they're going to be farming just for themselves, more or less. Uh, they're going to be trading with any people that are nearby, if there are, even are, uh, hunting. Uh, and the big people that are coming from there are these Scots-Irish and English um, of descent. Uh, so we talked about indentured servants, right? The seven year, often seven-year term to pay for passage and relieve of debt in Europe uh, to get over there. And these are the Scots-Irish, right? People of Scottish and Irish descent and, and English descent even are going to be a lot of these people, these indentured servants, when their time is up, they're heading west to the back country. Um, so we talked about slavery. We're going to be doing a whole day or, or so on that uh, coming up. But... What happens is, is eventually they're going to move away from the indentured servants and effectively more, they're going to head to more enslaved Africans. They don't need to pay them, right? Uh, sadly, they just need to buy them, and this is, it's horrible, but that's kind of the, the time period we're talking about. And they're, these slaves are forced to go over the Middle Passage, which is this horrific experience for them. If you've ever seen movies like Amistad or, or anything like that, um, which gives a good portrayal of, of the Middle Passage and people dying and being chained and so little room and no places to go for the bathroom and, and horrible food and in some cases when the people are expecting you to or when they're expecting to be boarded by, by authorities they might even just throw all these people overboard with the chains and lay them down and drown them it's, it's horrific, it's horrible stuff um, but the slavery is going to as we're going to talk about has become kind of this major uh, conflict between the North and the South, right? So in the last piece is this Great Awakening, which really all you would need to know and all I'm going to ask you to know about this at all here would be that it's this kind of just big religious revival in the 1700s uh, and that it's going to partially help lay the social foundations for the American Revolution. Okay, uh, so that's it, really. It, that's pretty quick. We did that all in less than half an hour here. Um, barely 20 minutes, really. Uh, so that's pretty good. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, I would suggest one last time looking over a map, right, of the 13 colonies, knowing where they are, knowing which ones are which, and that's like a third of your quiz tomorrow, uh, point-wise. So that's a pretty good deal. So 